Hi, Deidre here from Our Upcycled Life and welcome to my channel. I'm so excited to bring you this special compilation of all of my best shorts videos of the year. Uh, we're going to be looking back at some of the most popular, entertaining, and informative shorts. So grab a coffee or a tea and get comfortable because I've got lots of great videos to share with you. So let's dive right in, take a look at my best shorts on my channel in the past year, 2022. Let's get started. <laughs> finding rolling pin thrift store and upcycling them. You can put them all together in a basket and they look absolutely beautiful. This one I'm going to give a real farmhouse twist to. Painted it with some chalk paint. I'm gonna put a graphic on it using the Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. Printed these graphics off on my laser jet printer, reversing the text, added it to the rolling pin, let it sit for 24 hours, dampened it with some water, rubbed off the paper. We're gonna be left with a beautiful graphic. And then I sealed it up with some polyacrylic sealer. Gonna add a ribbon to the top and some embellishments. And we've created a beautiful piece of farmhouse decor for our kitchen with an upcycled rolling pin. I found this at the thrift store. It really needed a makeover. It certainly was a lot of work, but the end result was so worth it. The first thing that I did was I took out all of that cork out of the middle of the coasters. And then I took out these two little knobby things at the top, filled it up with some filler and sanded it down when it was all dry. Took it outside, painted it all with some matte flat black spray paint and then painted it with some white chalk paint. When everything was completely dry, I aggressively sanded it, gave it a really rustic feel. And then I printed off some graphics on my laser jet printer, making sure to reverse the text. These graphics are available in my Etsy store. They're so much fun to turn into coasters. Use my Mod Podge, applied it to the graphic, put it down, let it sit for 24 hours, and then I dampened the paper and rubbed it all off. Sealed it up with some engine enamel. That makes it really durable. And I've created this really cute coaster set from the vintage one that was ugly and dated. Check out the chippy paint on this old antique table leg. Isn't it beautiful? And I found these hooks in the scrap metal bin. I'm gonna pull it all together and create a beautiful piece of home decor. I'm gonna screw the hooks into the table leg, put some hooks on the back so we can hang it onto the wall, and I have created a simple, easy coat rack. What do you think? I found this old toolbox in the scrap metal bin and these brackets, and I knew how I could upcycle it. I saw the potential in it, so I brought it back to my shed and I started to upcycle it. I'm gonna mount these brackets on the bottom of the toolbox. I'm drilling a hole so I can just use a nut and bolt to attach it to the bottom of the toolbox. And when I have those done, I also drilled two holes in the bottom. In case it gets rain or it gets damp, the water will be able to run out and anything that I put in it won't get rusty. Also drilled two holes in the back. And this is how I upcycled it. It's gonna hold all of my garden tools outside of my garden shed. It's perfect and I love the way that it upcycled. What do you think? Today's upcycle is a quick one. Always look for wooden bowls when I'm at the thrift store. I had this little piece of a spindle left over from another project. Just gonna glue it together, screw it with a little screw, and we've created a really cute little decor bowl. How easy is that? Hi, Deidre here from Our Upcycled Life, and today we are upcycling this broken chair. When I find a chair that's broken, I never get rid of it. I dismantle it because I know I can turn it into something really pretty. I took the back spindles and I cut them down to size and I glued them back into the back of that chair because we're gonna use them as little hooks. I'm putting Vaseline all around the outside of the chair and painting over it with chalk paint because when you sand it down, it leaves a really chippy finish. I'm adding a graphic onto the seat using my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. You let that paper and Mod Podge dry for 24 hours, dampen it with some water, rub off the paper, and you're left with a beautiful graphic on your project. I had these two spindles, love the color. I'm gonna nail them on the top and the bottom of this chair. And I think this is gonna look beautiful in a farmhouse kitchen.
broken chair, but I knew I could upcycle it and I'm going to turn it into a beautiful wind chime. I had some eyelet screws that I picked up at the dollar store. I'm going to put them in the top of the spindles and then in the bottom of the back of the chair. And before we put it all together, I'm going to paint all of those spindles lots of really fun whimsical colors just using my acrylic paint. Because this is going to be out in the elements, I'm going to spray the spindles with some engine enamel and I'm going to put some penetrating oil on the back of the chair. Put it all together and we have made a really cute wind chime with a broken chair. What do you think? I've got a fun upcycle for you. I have this old dresser drawer and a broken teapot that's missing its lid and I'm going to upcycle it. I wanted to make the drawer look old and crackled so I put on some Elmer's glue, let it get tacky and I put some chalk paint on top of it and when it dries it creates a beautiful crackle finish. Added a ring drawer pull and I've masked off the inside of the teapot because we're going to take it outside and spray paint it with this beautiful yellow. I'm going to attach the teapot to the inside of this drawer with an old door handle and I found this plaque at the thrift store. We're going to scrape off that greeting card that was decoupaged onto it and turn it into a beautiful sign for our birdhouse. I'm doing my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer, dampening the paper after 24 hours, rubbing off the paper and we're left with a beautiful graphic. I found this old rusty chain in my stash, going to use that to hang it up and I have half of a spindle I'm going to use as a perch. What do you think? This piece of wood left over from another project that I did. I'm gonna turn it into a really fun sign. I've painted it, distressed it, and I'm gonna turn it into a garage sign. It's gonna be a perfect gift for a dad or a grandpa or an uncle. I printed off these graphics on my laser jet printer, making sure to reverse the text, and I'm using my Mod Podge mat. I let it sit for 24 hours, and then I dampened it with a rag and a little bit of water, and then I rub off all the paper, and I'm left with these graphics on the sign. I'm gonna seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer after I get all of the paper rubbed off. And that's how easy you can turn a scrap piece of wood into a great sign. It's gonna make a great gift. I'm gonna upcycle this vase I picked up at a yard sale for a dollar. It still had the price tag on it, $29.99. Wasn't fussy about the green color. I took it outside and sprayed it with some primer and then I let it dry completely and then I brought it into my shed and I painted it with some sand paint. If you've never used sand paint, you need to give it a try. The texture that it creates is fantastic. I put on two coats, let it completely dry in between each coat and you can see the graininess. It almost gives a stone finish on your projects. You can take any glass vase or glass jar and really update it with this sand paint recipe. When it was completely dry, I thought it needed a little bit of depth, so I'm dry brushing on some white chalk paint. Love the way that it turned out. What do you think? You won't want to miss what I'm going to do with this teapot and this candlestick holder. It turns out adorable. They were both already painted black, but I wanted them to be white, so I'm painting them with my homemade white chalk paint. I put on two coats and then once they were dry, I took a baby wipe and I just rubbed the baby wipe into that chalk paint wherever it would have naturally aged. And if you don't have baby wipes, you can just use a damp rag. I'm gonna put some graphics on it using my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. I printed this graphic off on my laser jet printer and we're gonna use the Mod Podge mat. I'm gonna cover that piece of paper and then put it on my project exactly where I want it, making sure to get out all of the bubbles and all of the wrinkles. I set it aside, it's been 24 hours. I have a damp rag with some water, dampening the paper until you can start to see the graphics and then we're rubbing it away. Now we're going to attach this using some E6000 and my glue gun, we're going to put it together. And this is what I created. Fill it up with some herbs, it's gorgeous. Wanna see what I'm gonna do with these pot lids? Stick around because it turns out fantastic. I had this old cupboard door and I'm cutting it down to size that I need for the project painting it with some white chalk paint, and then I'm sprinkling on some pickling salt. We're gonna add some texture to this piece of wood. Let it dry, now I'm painting on some red paint, gonna sprinkle in some salt, let it dry, gonna put on some turquoise paint, and then we're gonna get our scraper out and scrape away. We're gonna be left with a really rustic piece of wood, sealing it up with some polyacrylic sealer, and now we're gonna add these pot lids. I am drilling a hole so we can attach it to the wood, and I'm gluing the screw into the back of the pot lid so when we put it on the piece of wood, we can still put the knobs back on. And who thought picking up these pot lids would turn into something so beautiful? 
a little rack to hang up utensils or tea towels in a primitive farmhouse kitchen. Okay, so I found this rusty box at a yard sale for 50 cents. I've got the end of these spindles and I have some old CD labels. We're gonna use the paper underneath the labels, the shiny stuff. I've printed this off on my laser jet printer on the shiny side of the paper. We're gonna add some graphics to this rusty box. After I paint it with some homemade white chalk paint and I'm just dry brushing it on just to give it a light coat. This process of transferring graphics it will not work on an inkjet printer. You have to have a laser jet printer, but it is magical. I'm gonna cut it down to size and then we're gonna get out our polyacrylic sealer. You want a water-based polyacrylic sealer. We're gonna put a light coat where we want the graphic to be on the box. We're gonna lay it right into it, press it down, get all the bubbles and wrinkles out, set it aside and let it dry. When you peel that paper away, you've got a graphic. It might not be perfect. You might have a little few spots that don't transfer, but it is magical. Adding some feet and this is what I created. Love the way that it turned out old bolt oar at a yard sale. It's rowing days were over but I knew I could upcycle it and turn it into something beautiful. I took some time and cleaned it all up, sanded it right down to the bare wood. I then had some penetrating oil and I gave it a really good coat over the entire oar. The penetrating oil really made the grain in the oar pop. I'm really loving the way that it's turning out so far. I got my painter's tape out because I'm going to do some painting on it and because I put the penetrating oil on first after I put the paint on, it's not going to adhere very well. So when I peel the tape off and I give it a sand, it's going to give it a real beach coastal vibe. I paid $1.50 for this and it certainly was worth it. As you can see when I sanded it, how distressed it was. I'm going to put some hooks on it and I've measured them out so I can have them evenly spaced across the handle. I'm going to screw them on. I love the way this turned out. It's going to look perfect in a cottage or a lake house or at the beach. I found this wooden bowl with a lid at the thrift store. I knew I needed to decoupage it. Painted it with some black chalk paint and then some white chalk paint just to make it look distressed. Love this napkin. I found it at HomeSense and it's gorgeous. I'm going to decoupage this little trinket dish in sections. I'm going to do the top and then every other panel. If I was to do this whole project all in one piece of a napkin, it would be a wrinkled mess. That's why I'm doing it in sections. That way I can control the little pieces that I'm putting on and I can make sure there's no bubbles and wrinkles with a little bit of saran wrap, smoothing it out, and then sealing it with some polyacrylic sealer. It took a little bit of extra time just to do those sections, but it certainly was worth it in the end. And to clean up all yeah, these, I used a little bit of a fine sandpaper and then cleaned up the inside, touching up the black paint, sealed it all up with some engine enamel so it's really durable if I wanna put some earrings and necklaces in, and it's all finished. I am a collector of junk. I'm never quite sure what I'm gonna do with it. I set it aside until I find some inspiration. So you should check out what I did with this old piece of wood, a rusty rake, and a piece of old chippy painted baseboard. I put some penetrating oil on the piece of wood and I'm gonna seal up that chippy baseboard with some matte polyacrylic sealer. I'm gonna put some glue on that piece of baseboard and then nail it onto that piece of wood. I always try to achieve this chippy paint look when I'm doing my painting techniques. So when I found this baseboard that was already chippy, I fell in love with it. I found this rusty latch and it worked perfect. I'm gonna screw it onto that wood because my rake fits right into it. And this is what I created. What do you think? Let's do some upcycling. I had this old strainer. Let's turn it into a plant hanger. I'm going to drill four holes around the rim and then I'm gonna get out my dollar store trine and determine how long I want it to hang. And then I'm gonna do a lark's head knot around that wooden ring and then tie the string onto the strainer. I had this little bit of a spindle. The patina is gorgeous on it. I drilled a hole and put some wire through it and we're gonna attach it to the bottom of the strainer. I never throw much out because I know at some point we ate something beautiful and I've created a beautiful plant hanger for my porch. I'm going to show you a really cool way to decoupage with two different types of napkins. One's going to be on the inside and one's going to be on the outside. First thing you want to do is you want to make sure your napkins are only one ply. So if they're three, take the bottom two off and just work with the top one that has the pattern on it. And then I'm going to cut it in a circle to fit around the outside of the bowl just so it's a little bit bigger. Using my Mod Podge mat, I'm going to start from the middle and work my way down around the whole bowl, embracing some of those wrinkles because that's inevitable and it's going to happen. 
I've got the first napkin on, we're gonna let it dry completely, and then I'm taking my sanding block and just sanding all around the edges. Here's the trick. You're gonna put on a coat of white chalk paint, let it dry completely, give it a little sanding to make it nice and smooth, and then get that second napkin. Cut it in a circle a little bit bigger than your bowl and do the same process. Start from the middle and then work your way down, applying Mod Podge around the whole bowl. We're gonna seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer. How beautiful is this? I found this in a scrap wood pile and I knew I could turn it into a beautiful farmhouse theme sign. I've sanded it right down to get that top finish off because it was really glossy, filled up the holes and painted it with some of my black homemade chalk paint. I made these DIY silicone molds and I'm going to add one to my sign, taking my air dry clay, filling it up with that mold and we're gonna add an embellishment to the top of the sign. If you've never made silicone molds, head to my channel and check out that video because it is so fantastic. I'm gonna set this aside, let it dry, we'll put our sign together tomorrow. I took my Gorilla Glue, glued that embellishment on, I'm painting it with my white homemade chalk paint, and then I'm going to dry brush a little bit of my black chalk paint on that embellishment. One last sanding, and we're gonna turn this into a sign using my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. I'm putting the Mod Podge on the paper that I printed on my laser jet printer, let it sit for 24 Rub hours, paper off with some water, and this is what I created. I picked up this framed canvas at the thrift store and it really needed an upcycle. I sanded it down so it was nice and smooth, put on a coat of black chalk paint so it sealed everything up and then put a coat of white chalk paint on top of that. Now we have a blank canvas ready to create. I'm gonna use these napkins. We're gonna do two different techniques. I'm gonna do a decoupage with the napkin and then I'm gonna do a graphic transfer in the middle. I've tore up all of these napkins to go around the inside of the frame and I'm using some Mod Podge mat to apply them. When you're decoupaging like this, it looks better when you've got a torn edge and it just blends into your project better. And if you check at your local dollar store, there's always so many beautiful napkins to choose from. I printed off this graphic on my laser jet printer and we're gonna use our Mod Podge mat, making sure to reverse the text. I'm putting that graphic in the middle, let it sit for 24 hours. I've dampened it with a cloth, rubbed off all the paper. Now we're gonna seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer. This is what I created. I found a piece of an old broken chair in the wood pile at the dump, brought it home. I'm gonna turn it into a fantastic wooden sign. It was already painted black. I wanted to leave it that color, so I'm just sanding it down and distressing it. And then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna add some wax over that whole back of the chair. I had a piece of scrap wood that I cut for the back that we're gonna fit in the middle, painting it with some black chalk paint and then some white chalk paint, putting a little bit of candle wax on too to give it a bit of a distressed look. It's gonna fit right in the back of that chair. We are going to do our Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method with this quote. I'm gonna put the Mod Podge on my graphics that I printed on my laser jet printer and then let it sit for 24 hours and then take some water, rub off the paper. We're gonna be left with a beautiful graphic. I'm gonna seal everything up with some polyacrylic sealer, nail it onto the back of that chair. And this is what I created from an old piece of a chair from the dump. This scrap piece of tongue and groove and I'm gonna turn it into a beautiful piece of farmhouse decor. I've cut off that piece of tongue and groove and I'm going to find the middle of the board, use my square and draw a line across. Now I have this cutting board that I keep out in my work shed that I use as a template and I'm going to trace it onto that piece of wood and I'm going to be able to get two cutting boards out of this piece. And these sell really well right now so if you have a booth or you sell online or you have an Etsy shop give this a go. I'm going to cut both of these out with my jigsaw, drill a hole in the top, sand it really well and they turned out fantastic. Now these are not food safe they're only for decor but they are beautiful when they're all finished up and they look perfect displayed in a kitchen. Found this wooden tray at the thrift store. We're gonna give it a makeover. I cleaned it up with some hot soapy water and now I'm painting it with some of my black homemade chalk paint. I put on two coats of that homemade black chalk paint, letting it completely dry in between each coat. Now I'm just taking my scraper and I'm scraping off the paint anywhere where it would have naturally aged. And I'm taking it down to the natural wood. I love using the scraper method when I don't want to bring out my sander and make a mess. And it's definitely an easy way to distress a piece and make it look authentic. I found this drawer liner at the dollar store. I'm going to line the inside of this tray with it. It's peel and stick and it's going to fit in there perfectly. Another successful upcycle. Today we're going to upcycle this thrift store stool. It's really dated with that heart, but I'm gonna embrace it and I'm gonna give it a little bit of a farmhouse twist. 
painted it with some black chalk paint and now I'm putting on some candle wax. Anywhere you put candle wax, when you paint over top of it, the paint is not going to stick and it's gonna leave a distressed finish. Waited for that coat to dry, then I put on the yellow, more candle wax, put on some white, and now we're ready to make it look really distressed and chippy. Taking my scraper, my sander, and just sanding it and being really aggressive anywhere that candle wax is, that paint from underneath is gonna peek through. Putting on my Mod Podge reverse graphics using regular computer paper, printing on my laser jet printer with a little bit of Mod Podge mat, applying it, letting it sit for 24 hours, dampening it with a rag, rubbing off the paper. Then we're gonna seal it with some polyacrylic sealer. And this is my thrift store stool, upcycled with some farmhouse feels. scrap piece of plywood that I didn't want to throw out so I'm going to turn it into a farmhouse themed sign. Printed off my graphics on my laser jet printer and then I applied some Mod Podge to those graphics and placed them on the piece of plywood where I wanted them to be. Once I had all the graphics measured and placed exactly where I wanted them and made sure they were nice and straight, I set the sign aside for 24 hours and let it dry completely. After 24 hours, I got a rag with a little bit of water on them and just dampen it so you can just start to see the graphics show through and rub off all of the paper. And once I've rubbed off all of the paper, I sealed it up with some polyacrylic sealer and I've created a beautiful farmhouse sign from some plywood. I found this vintage key holder and I'm going to give it an upcycle. Took it outside, gave it a really good sanding, gave it a coat of spray paint, and then brought it back into my shed when it was dry and coated it with some homemade white chalk paint. It took a couple coats to get it covered completely and then once it was dry I took it back outside and gave it another sanding to make it rustic and chippy. This is the graphics that I'm going to use. I'm only going to use the word keys on the top and I'm using my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer technique. This graphic is available in my Etsy store if you want to try it out. I let it dry overnight and now I dampened it with a cloth and I'm rubbing off all the paper and you're left with a wonderful graphic. And this is a great upcycle, so much better than the original. It's not dated anymore and I absolutely love it. If you want the full tutorial, head over to my YouTube channel and check it out. I found this shelf at the thrift store and this heart made it look a little bit dated. So I decided to take the heart off and use it for another project. I cut a piece of wood to fit between those two brackets and sized it up glued it, nailed it, and it's all ready to paint. Now this doesn't look so 90s. Put a coat of nice brown stain all over it and then painted it with some of my homemade chalk paint and then I took it outside and distressed it with my sander to give it a really rustic look. I designed these graphics and they're available in my Etsy store if you want to try them out and I'm only going to use a portion of them to fit on that piece of wood that I put in between the brackets. I'm going to use my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer technique on this and I think it's going to look great in a farmhouse kitchen. What a great upcycle. It took an old dated shelf and made it look fantastic and chippy and I love it. any scrap pieces of wood because everything can be turned into a little sign or a little ornament or something that you can sell and make some profit on. These are actually slats from a broken shutter. I deconstructed the shutter and I saved all of these and I'm going to turn them into ornaments. I'm painting them all with my homemade chalk paint and then I'm going to do my Mod Podge reverse graphic transfer method. You just print these off on your laser jet printer making sure to reverse the text and using some Mod Podge mat. There was a lot of slats in that wooden shutter so I can make a lot of ornaments. 
I let the graphics sit for 24 hours, dampened it with water, and then rubbed off the paper, and we're left with these really pretty graphics on these wooden pieces. Drilling a hole in the top, adding a bead and twine, and we've created these really cute ornaments that sell really well. What do you think? I found this old barn board door in the scrap wood pile. I brought it home because I knew I could upcycle it into something beautiful again. I also picked up this plaque at the thrift store, It's Seen Better Days, painted it with some black chalk paint, and then dried it with my heat gun to speed up the process. I had this piece of coffee stained paper that I printed on that I'm going to put in the middle with some Mod Podge. Just putting the Mod Podge on the back, we're gonna decoupage that right onto the plaque. Now I'm gonna attach it to that wooden plaque that we painted with the black chalk paint, set it aside, and let it dry completely. When it's all dry, I'm gonna seal it up with some polyacrylic sealer, and then I'm gonna screw it onto that barn board door. I love the farmhouse feels that this has, and I was so fortunate to find this piece of barn board door. What do you think? I hope you enjoyed today's shorts compilation, and thank you so much for all your support here on my channel this past year. Happy crafting, and take care.